Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about everything that's going to be happening in Missoula this weekend and more with some events, some news things happening this weekend as well, and a little bit of weather to kind of tide you guys over and see what you guys can do when you're out and about this weekend. But let's start off with a little bit of weather. It is currently 39 degrees outside. You have that high of 52. You have a low of 34 degrees. It's going to be a 30, 40% chance of mixture between rains and snow. Uh, Saturday, you have a high of 57. You have a low of 41 degrees. And then again, on Sunday, you'll have that high of 50 55 degrees. So things are going to get warmer, but they're still going to get pretty rainy outside. And if you guys are planning on going out and about, maybe your Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon will be the day that you guys do that. Um, so let's talk about some news items. In local news, the University of Montana hosted not only Rob Quist, but actor Alyssa Milano, who's, who's the boss, um, will uh, let you decide. Um, the campus uh, held a rally to support Rob Quist in their efforts to promote him in this special election to fill the uh, U.S. rep seat that Ryan Zinke left a couple months back. Uh, Quist uh, attended the University of Montana back in the late 60s. Basically, he was a young adult in the summer of 69. Um, he told uh, stories from his youth and, of course, a campaign for public lands to be controlled federally and uh, looked after by Montanans. Um, Congressional Leadership Fund, a super PAC dedicated to electing Republicans to the House of Representatives, targeted UM students with a Snapchat um, geofilter ad that featured the caption, How I Feel About Lion Rob Quist. So far, uh, this uh, fund, so far, this fund uh, has spent over $1.5 million to defeat Quist in this upcoming election. In the state, Senate Bill uh, 294 was stalled during an infrastructure negotiations in the final days of session. Uh, SB 294 ap uh, appropriates approximately $22 million from the combination of the um, general fund, state special revenue, and federal uh, special revenue accounts to give state employees a 1% raise in February 2018 and a second one year uh, later. Uh, some members opposed amendments to this bill transferring $2 million from the 911 fund to the Montana University System so it can offer voluntary buyouts to the address budget shortfall, particularly at the University of Montana. The money comes um, from a $1 per month fee on each cell phone user on each cell phone's user bill. Uh, if you haven't already heard that the University of Montana is hoping to buy out a couple folks who have been um, teaching at the university and are eligible for early retirement. Uh, leaving administration alone, um, most likely. Um, looks like the budget is coming along with Montana House and Senate finishing up their biannual state meetings, um, and they will be wrapping up pretty soon, actually. Um, um, in the national news, uh, for the first time in 30-plus uh, years, a president will not attend the correspondence dinner in which the press and government go toe-to-toe -to -toe with jokes and roasts towards each other. But you, can't, but you can still see all that wonderful programming C-SPAN provides for you uh, to watch while, you're, uh, while you wait. So uh, anyways, more in the national news, uh, United Airlines and uh, lawyers um, for the passenger seen on the video being dragged off the United flight I in Chicago says the man has reached a, uh, a settlement with the airline. The terms of agreement were not announced. Uh, what caused the United Air Airlines stock to plummet um, and constant ridicule, ridicule from the various mediums the airline has not paid the passenger, um, Dr. Uh, David Doe but now allows folks to uh, skip flights. I mean, they have paid, of course, they have reached a settlement with the doctor, um, but th they now allow folks who skip flights up to $10,000 uh, worth of incentives. So uh, if you guys are uh, kicked off your flight or you say, hey, who's willing to take off your flight, you have better incentives that way. So of course, anybody who does plan to fly United Airlines soon, um, now would be the d perfect time to uh, milk this cow as, as much as possible. Um, but I'm not going to uh, drag on about this anymore. So this concludes News, News, News with Scott Ramp. And I got this information from the Missoulian, HelenaAir.com, and NPR.org. Um, so um, I got a bunch of other stuff I'm going to be talking about today. Um, I got some new programming. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to throw I'm going to throw up a PSA and then I have Nikki Rob from the Missoula Community Foundation talking about Give Local. So without further ado, I'm going to uh, uh, show an art clip and then when I come back um, I'll have Nikki Rob on the show.
Senior Corps at Missoula Aging Services is Missoula's volunteer hub. Hundreds of volunteer opportunities await. You can help improve reading skills, school attendance, and the well-being of students, provide services that help older adults, or find out about countless other opportunities that will capture your interest. Because your heart's desire never ages, now is the time to reinvent yourself. Discover your perfect volunteer opportunity by calling 728-7682. Birthdays come and go, each year adding up to a life. Hey guys, we're here with Nikki Robb, and she's here to talk about Give Local from the Missoula Community Foundation. And th there's just a whole bunch of stuff going on. Let's uh, let's start off with uh, um, what's the main thing you guys want to kick off with? Well, let's talk a little bit about what Missoula Gives is. Missoula Gives, formerly known as Give Local Missoula, Lots of great things happening this year. Missoula Gives is a 24-hour online and in-person donating event. This year we have 154 nonprofits involved, which is a record number of nonprofits. So way to go, Missoula. We've got 154 nonprofits involved, and on between May 4th at 6 p.m. and May 5th at 6 p.m., we're shooting to raise $300,000 from 3,000 different donors for these nonprofits. And uh, uh, this uh program it really helps benefit nonprofits here and around Missoula and you guys and everybody with Give Local and get involved with Give Local basically uh, you guys have increased every single year. Yes last year we raised 274,000 despite a couple technical issues uh, this year it's going to be 300,000. This is also a statewide campaign so all the big cities are doing it Billings, Bozeman, Flathead, Helena and then there's also a statewide site so we're trying to raise a million dollars for the state of Montana. Great. So uh, where is this event kicking off? Well, let's kick it off on Thursday, May 4th at Plonk. So we'll be downtown at Plonk at the Wine Bar. We'll be there from 5 to 7. The event doesn't actually start until 6, but that being said, we will have our leaderboards up on the TV or up on the wall so everyone can kind of see our totals. Uh, there has been some behind the scenes fundraising allowed this year, so it'll be really exciting at 6 o'clock to see how much these nonprofits have been out there trying to raise money already. Um, also, we have some great donor incentives for the Plonk and all of the donor lounges we're doing. So if you come down to Plonk, if you made a donation between April 1st and May 4th at 7 p.m., uh, Plonk is being kind enough to donate a drink chip for a GFC cocktail to anyone who's made a donation. So come down to Plonk on Thursday, get in there on that awesome free drink cocktail. All you have to do is support your favorite nonprofit in town. Right, and Give Local is not, I mean, it's, uh, you guys are going to be counting the, um, the uh, donations that are given between um, May 4th at 6 p.m. to May 5th at 6 p.m. Yep. But you guys still have, you can still donate anytime um, during this event because Give Local will give money, but they will just be telling up all the money at uh, 6 p.m. Yes, yes. And so go to missoulagives.org. Missoulagives.org, you can find all the participating nonprofits. You can get on there and kind of see who's participating, learn a little bit more about them. You can see videos all about the nonprofits this year, which is really exciting. Um, you can also see our donor lounges, so all the different events we have lined up for both Thursday and Friday. Uh, there's some great toolkits on there to help the nonprofits and to um, really help spread the word. So anybody can go on there and check that stuff out, missoulagives.org. Great, and, um, and also, uh um, where is your headquarters? Where are you guys going to be located this whole time? So on Friday, we will be located in the Florence building from 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. <clears throat> there, we will be accepting check donations and cash donations. We realize not everybody wants to get online and make a donation at MissoulaGives.org, so we'll be there to accept cash, or cash and check donations. You can also accept cash and check donations at any of the Missoula Federal Credit Union branches this year. So thank you to our premier sponsor, Missoula Federal Credit Union, for doing that. Uh, but we'll be at the Florence Lounge from 8 to 5. Again, we have some great donor incentives. We've got our friends from Friends of the Shelter coming down with a group of kitties that are going to hang out with us in the lobby. We've got uh, a friend coming down to do some chair massage for anybody who's made a donation for the Missoula Gives campaign. Uh, we're going to have free popcorn all day. The Redbird's going to be donating some delicious drinks and snacks for the afternoon. We've got lunch coming down in the, in the morning. We've also got... Just so many great things yes. going on there. And you guys are going to wrap up at the um, Missoula's First Credit Union? Yeah, so we'll be, um, for the finale celebration, we are going to be over at Missoula Federal Credit Union at 3600 Brook Street. So that's on the south side of town across the street from Paradise Falls in their backyard because next Friday is going to be beautiful. 
and we're going to be back there celebrating this amazing community-wide fundraiser. So we'll announce our winners, we'll give some other prize announcements, we've got a couple other cool things we'll be announcing, we've got live music there, we're going to be giving 150 donor bags to the first 150 donors to show up. And in these bags are going to be all sorts of goodies. So next Friday is Cinco de Mayo and First Friday. So if you come to our event at the Credit Union from 5 to 7, if you've made a donation, you'll get one of these bags. In the bags, there's everything from beer koozies to sunglasses to coupons downtown to free drink chips. So it's a great opportunity to come and celebrate Missoula's awesome fundraising and then be able to head on out to home or back downtown to celebrate. Yep, and Missoula... Is Missoula, it cannot be Missoula without all the nonprofits that keep its wheels turning here. That's in right, that's right. Thank you to the nonprofits that keep Missoula so special and great. All right, cool. One more time, where can people uh, uh, donate and when can you guys donate? All right, well, I encourage anybody to go to missoulagives.org anytime. Check out the website. You can donate starting now. So get on there and check out missoulagives.org. And one final thing I wanted to mention to you was we're doing a text to give campaign this year, which is really exciting. So anybody who wants to support all the nonprofits at once, they don't want to pick a specific one because they love them all so much. All they have to do is text Missoula to 50155. That's Missoula. Five zero one five five, <laughs> and that will be a big giant pool that will just be split amongst all the participating nonprofits. So, go ahead and try that out too. All right, thanks, Nikki. Thank you, Scott. Yep. So be sure to give local. Um, they will be kicking off their event at the Plonk starting at six p.m. But everything's going to be happening online. So go to givelocal.org Ms. or MissoulaGives.org. Missoula either org. either works. All right, thank you, and uh, we'll be back uh, with plenty more show for you guys. He is the founder of Tell Us Something. Please welcome Mark Moss. Thanks. Wow, so nervous. I really am nervous. In uh, January of 2011, I was starting to learn how Twitter works, and I, I'm still trying to figure that out, if anyone wants to teach me. But a guy named Patrick Dugans, I wish I remember what his handle was, I think it's Pat Dugans, at Pat Dugans. Um, he was gathering groups of people to share true personal stories on the stage over at the Badlander. And he was calling his event Missoula Moth. And I have, been a public speaker for most of my adult life. I was a teacher in Ohio for a while. I was a park ranger in Yellowstone National Park and gave presentations to large groups of tourists, uh, visitors. <laughs> and, and I was a salesman for a while and so I'm used to speaking in public but I've never told my own story before. Yeah, you know, I think it's one of the biggest threats we face. Um, we want to safeguard our employees and our customers and all the people in the communities we serve. And so the thought that someone would use technology to harm someone, um, it particularly as sensors and technology get more embedded in, into operations, that's more and more possible. I mean, soon we'll have them embedded into our cars and public transportation and all sorts of things where the risks and stakes are higher. Uh, there's lots of wonderful studies from, um, forgetting his first name, Stern, um, the interpersonal world, Daniel Stern, the interpersonal world of the infant, about um, swaddling and holding a child who's very, very frenetic, and the soothing patterns, so, and the kicking patterns at the table. So that, you, and you mimic these mimicries that then become regulative attunements that, as you say, accommodate, tamp down, direct the emotions from outside inward, from out, from one inter, interpersonally, but in a way that teach through that cueing the child themselves. I see the dance world, especially partner dance, but there's a lot of solos out there, um, as very much about that. This is a, a cool picture that we took in Death Valley. That's our system there. We did a big project down there with the Weather Channel. 
So there is a classic way to measure body temperature. Um, most of you won't like it, but we do that all the time in our heat chamber and we work with this area and it's not the most popular measure but it's the most reliable measure okay so we use wired probes that we have the individuals put in and they stay in for sometimes hours at a time and it gives us continuous second by second core temperature measures well that's fine and good in the lab but I have yet to go to a fire and say, Brent, what are you studying this time? <laughs> well, I got this new special gizmo that I want you to try out. It's designed to see how hot you get during the day. All you've got to... Wait a minute. Come. It was really heartening to see the outpouring of resistance to the nomination of Betsy DeVos. And I think in the process of learning what you needed to learn in order to advocate and make those phone calls, as many of you did, and send those emails, you might have learned a thing or two about charter schools and about privatization. Because that's what Betsy DeVos stands for. That's what her career has been about. She argues that charter schools have as good or better results for students, and the data does not support that. Not even in big urban areas, which Montana has none of. The impact in Montana would be drastic to our smaller school districts to have public funding withdrawn from schools that are already fighting to maintain the programs that they serve their kids with. The impact here in Missoula would be dramatic because right now we're already struggling with state and federal budget cuts in Missoula. Jane, Senator Jaynes has said that he's very interested in returning control to the local community. And it's confusing to me how uh, his decision to vote for Betsy DeVos indicates in any way that he is listening to those very local community members. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I mean, sorry about that uh, text. I just kind of flew up at it, yeah, and it started like, like shaking and like doing a little strobe light thing. That was weird. Like usually, uh, usually that doesn't that kind of thing never happens on my show. But um, I just want to thank once again Nikki Rob for coming on down to uh, promote Give Local. So MissoulaGives.org, not uh, GiveLocal.com or to GiveLocal.org. So. Um, you guys, um, those are some of the new programs. You guys can watch any of those programs at any time by logging on to MCAT.org. It's as simple as clicking on our link, channel 189. It brings up this nice little page, and you guys can watch all sorts of things. And the newest things are posted from the top to bottom. And as you can see, Tell Us Something is at the top of the list, which uh, just premiered last night. And you guys can totally check that out at any time. Um, it'll re-air later on the, um, um, this week, um, this weekend as well. Um, you got Wilderness Issues Lecture Series with Dr. Um, John Osborne. You got Leadership Roundtable, um, ASAF Cafe. I want to give props to ASAF. Um, he's going to be doing his uh, um, ASAF Cafe. It happens pretty much every Thursday at seven at 5.30, and it also reruns, um, I think, I believe it's on um, Saturdays as well. Um, but uh, some of cat news real quick. Uh, next Friday um, is First Friday, and also I'll be doing a, a little art walk and art guide for all you guys. But um, we're, I'm going to try to convince you guys to come on down to MCAT just to either say hello or say how wonderful MCAT is. MCAT provides uh, media and video assistance to uh, these kind of programs and many different nonprofits and civic groups and the University of Montana to provide programming for the lectures, uh, causes, rallies, all sorts of things. We're unbiased. We usually go to pretty much anyone who requests us to go down and film them. Um, I mean, there's whenever there's a, uh, a decision where just like, I'm not sure if I want to do this one, blah, blah, blah. Oh, this, this event's about meat. I'm vegetarian. I'm, I don't really like doing this kind of stuff. We will do it no matter what for you guys, no matter uh, what the uh, event is. If you are a Ku Klux Klan and you want to promote that kind of thing, by all means, do it. Um, actually, that would be pretty good TV as well. I, I would totally watch that just to be like, mm-hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Anyways, uh, <laughs> opinions aside, um, you can log on to MCAT.org for more information. We have this bike that we're raffling off for our 5th of the May Cinco de Mayo 
from 5 to 8, we'll be uh, having our party at Downtown Dance Collective, and you can enter to win. Um, and then we'll do the drawing sometime at 7, 7.30 p.m. for the bike raffle and whatnot. The big thing that we're going to be doing is um, from 5.30 to about 6 or 6.30-ish, um, we're, we're, I keep on giving you the random times, but um, pretty much it, towards the middle of the, um, the day, it's like from 6 to 6.30, I believe, is when we're going to be doing some presentations and talking about MCAT and talking about what our future is all about with uh, Missoula Community, um, it's the, um, it's Missoula uh, Community Media Resource is our slogan. I had to look it over there because like, sometimes you just can't look down and read upside down. Um, but to find out more information, go to MCAT.org. And to find out more information about my morning show, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice we made you write it out twice. You click on videos and you can see past interviews and past uh, content as well as uh, I'll have a new teen talk today and a new dubbing stuff. Um, speaking of dubbing stuff, I have a brand new dubbing stuff, which is called, it, which is from the movie The Royal Bed. And when I come back, I'll talk everything that you need to know about what's happening in the city of Missoula, where they're talking about the new 500-unit complex that it's going to be um, building, and they're talking about some encroaching problems that I may have with K Kiwanis Park. Stay with me, and I'll be on that right after this. Hello, I present to you a man with a beard and a man with a military uniform. I'm pretty Stand up straight, dear. I will not have you embarrassing me in front of these nice young gentlemen that will be coming through that door. Send them in. Mm, yes, ma'am. Oh, man, all the rigors of just having them just open the door and present people. It's kind of exhausting. Come on, get in here already. Okay, here they come. Whew, I need to get shorter hallway. Dead hut. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, hello okay. there, madam. Okay, that's nice. That's nice. Close the door. Close it. Close the hello, door. Hello, ma'am. I'm here to talk to you about a wonderful proposition. All right, let's hear it. I got a long day. As you can see by my uniform, I represent the as military. As a strong, independent businesswoman, please refrain from explaining things. Well, as you can see by my fellow partner here stroking his beard, this... I'm well aware of that man stroking his beard. It is very distracting, and I, I just can't well, leave it. I wish you would stop interrupting me every chance. Oh, am I interrupting you? I didn't even notice. Well, I'm here to tell you about this wonderful thing that the military is doing to help benefit communities from across this wonderful, wonderful nation. Well, I don't see why it has anything to do with me. It's quite simple. You have money, and we want some money so we can uh, buy some things like, uh, you know, bubblegum flavored bubblegum. That's just ridiculous. Surely you don't think our troops don't need gum. It prevents tooth decay, and they sometimes go months without brushing. I'm well aware of bad breath from soldiers. My husband is in the military, for crying out loud. How'd you know my name anyways? Shirley Vanderbilt is your name, right? It was on your desk this whole time. Surely it's elementary. Well, isn't that smart? So do we have a deal on the gum for the military? You know what? This reminds me of a story. Back in my days of war. Oh, excuse me, mother. Don't mind if I interrupt, but, um, it's your husband. Allow myself to introduce myself. I have a mustache. Take my hat. I am here to say. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about what's happening within the city of Missoula. We'll kick things off with a nice little... Um, so, if you guys don't already know, Lambros Farron Apartment LLC is building a 500-unit apartment complex next to the Kiwanis Park at 301 East Front Street, right across from the old library. In December 2016, council approved easements for the project through Kiwanis Park. Kiwanis Park is a land and water conservation fund park that carries federal deed restrictions that include prohibition on allowing new above-ground utilities and uh, in the park. 
Um, the development has identified a power pole where there is room for a public right of way just outside the park boundaries where the new utility box may be located. The amendment a easement will allow the developer to bring the power underground to the apartment prom complex. This request to amend the easement of supports redevelopment of public um, of property inside the city, promotes affordable housing, and maximizes utilization of existing public infrastructures while providing public parklands. So here's David Sel uh, Selvage, and he's the uh, project um, coordinator, and he's talking about this um, this new easement and how we're gonna how the city can adapt. This particular proposal is to grant an additional 714 square feet of easement. Uh, so that they can bring underground power to their building. And the challenge that they've run into is because Cabanas is a land and water conservation fund deed restricted park, they cannot come down off their power pole that's in the park and put a new can there that allows for that transition to underground power. Uh, so they have to go to a pole that's just outside of the park boundaries proper to do that, and in order to do that, they need an additional 713 square feet uh, to bring that across their frontage and then connect into the point of connection on their building. All right, so that was David Selvage. He was talking a little bit more details about what needed to happen to help move this forward. Um, so this is Brian Van Osberg. He asks a question in which it gets answered as well. In the referral, you can't have an at-grade structure basically uh, for the utilities and so this alternative allows us to not have that by virtue of using this other power pole. That's, is that correct? That, that's correct, yes. Uh, land and water conservation funds uh, would allow for if it was to serve the park we could put an above grade utility but anything that's not park related, right. it can't be above grade and consuming valuable green space. All right, so um, that was kind of uh, what they're talking more about. Uh, the Kiwanis Park is a federally uh, funded park to uh, help basically improve um, cities' infrastructures in terms of parkland and providing recreation for people. And Lambros is one of those places that are – and Lambros Construction is tr uh, building an apartment complex on basically what used to be just a kind of empty parking lot and it also used to be kind of like where a bank was and then the, of, of course you know they moved it and kind of adjusted it as a, I mean as a way so they're well, they're working on a process of trying to defer power to get things moving forward as well um here is another quote uh they did pass the easement back in december and this is just an update to work with this new information that would alter the easement to reach power requirements heidi west asked um what's going to happen and when approved and this is how david uh uh responds specified the method of construction uh, for these lines. We, uh, uh, the park board has required that they secure a park vehicle access permit so that we can go through all those components and protect and ensure that whatever recreational use and access that we have to the park is sustained open, mm -hmm. that we have appropriate detours and safety and site restoration. My assumption is that they will try to do all these utilities in close order so that the uh, uh, pavement patching, uh, if necessary, will be done all in one shot. Yeah, there's a lot happening with Kiwanis Park. Not only is the apartment complex 500 unit apartment, um, kind of like a dual um, university uh, facilities for students. It's supposed to encourage students to live there, but also they just replaced a lot of the playgrounds in the area. So they had a big portion of Kiwanis Park already closed, and now they're talking about um, a more of a um, an alteration in ways and that with construction happening they're going to have even more uh, um, areas of construction zones where people are not all basically allowed to go through so they'll have new ways of getting to Kiwanis Park so um, there will be more stuff happening at Kiwanis Park also um, Kiwanis Park is kind of like the center of uh, pavilion talk so the whole idea behind that is that they're trying to decide whether or not um, what p pavilions I mean, basically, Kiwanis Park is 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 highlighted because I mean I, I know I'm going way off topic, but um, Kiwanis Park is basically the test subject on how future pavilions are going to work in the city of Missoula. So that's just a little side note for you guys, just kind of give you a little update. And here uh, is David Selvage once again. He talks about the possibility of transferring power lines to underground. Not only the power lines that uh, are part of uh, 
um, that are already going above Quantum Spark, but also kind of like changing the area, not only to uh, have every more power lines underground, basically. Um, we're continually working with Northwestern Energy uh, at various sites. Uh, we have a suspected violation of LWCF for a uh, installed meter base in the park that was done in 2011. We're going to try to have that move, but uh, we have limited staff time, and as you are well aware, we're pretty busy getting ready for you guys to look at budget stuff. So. Um, those are relatively low priorities on the list to deal with those things, but we are always looking for the opportunity to remove power lines. All right, so um, when, that was the last quote I have of the Parks and Conservation meeting. Um, they will move forward. Uh, this uh, little easement, it was just uh, about 700 square feet so they can um, connect power to the new building that will be constructed sometime in the next year or, or or so, so uh, look for look for that as well. There will be a lot of construction happening in the area. Not only will the 500 unit complex be built, but the new public library is working out details to build Kitty Corner across from there, but it will be directly across from the MCT. So look out for that. And that basically concludes the city council report of for your Friday. And these are all the community meetings from Wednesday meetings. Um, they kept it fairly short. It basically started around 9, 9.05, and it kind of ended at 1 p.m. Uh, for committee meetings on your Wednesday. This is the one meeting that cut, this is the one um, committee meeting that really stood out to me. Um, there are a bunch of other meetings that I encourage you guys to watch at any time just to learn about what the city is doing and what kind of projects they're um, being involved with. Um, and I'm, I'll, I'll keep you updated on all those um, in the next uh, coming weeks as well. Um, Let's talk about uh, a brand new Flagship Friday video of the week. So I'm trying to bring back, uh, bring uh, Flagship Friday back just a little bit earlier in the show. Um, I have plenty of programs that I'll be uh, having for you guys even after the Flagship uh, program ends, which will be ending next Friday. Next Friday will be the last of the Flagship programs. Um, today is my uh, basically last kind of production day. So I just finished up uh, making DVDs for Lowell School Kids. So they'll be going home with some uh, wonderful DVDs of all their programs that they have uh, made themselves and I've helped them make in terms of storytelling through visual medium. But without further ado, here is another um, Flagship Friday video of the week. And when I come back, I'm going to talk everything you need to know about what's happening um, today and tomorrow. With them, it's difficult because they always fight. I mean, like, it's a lot of chairs and desks for just, like, three or four people. So I think they could, like, make it smaller because, like, there's only, like, ever four people in there because it's, like, yeah. <coughs> They're also annoying. I can't get anything done. I mean, I've already figured out, you know, the pie and all that stuff. But they're still really annoying and I can't do anything. Stop it! So I was just sitting there, you know, studying. And she, tapping her pen, you know, I asked her to stop very nicely. And she just keeps doing it. And then she turns around and taps it on my desk right in front of me. I'm really dramatic and I wanted her to stop. Okay? So if I did that, she would probably just get really angry and stop because I would just do it again. Very annoyed and hurt. Because that shows that nobody cares about the kids. <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, Alana, she's just like so overdramatic. She was annoying me by telling me to stop doing something to help me focus. What are you gonna do about it? Shaylee is like so bossy. It's just like, ugh. Probably because I'm way smarter. Even more, 
I'm out. I had a really bad day. Um, I hurt my hand. Um, I also got in a fight. Um, teachers really hate me. I'm being bullied, and I also got an ISS because of this now. Haley gets like, she likes playing around when other people are studying. She likes annoying them a lot by like pushing their books and stuff. Like as you saw, she tried pushing my book with her roller, and she tried rolling the ball across, which was really annoying. No, I'm gonna see how she reacts to this. You want to go? You want to go? Let's go! Ah! Threw the ruler off and then she got up and was just like, Do you want to go, girl? Because I'll go. And then she started freaking out. And then, and then I was doing the ruler and um, then I tossed the ball across and she just slammed the ruler down and got up and started punching me. Yep, that's what happened. She don't know who she's messing with because things are about to escalate. You suck! What are you doing? You're tearing each other apart. You're tearing the school apart. I don't even know why he came in there and yelled at us. Like, totally not his business. And I just... He doesn't talk that much, but when he does it, every time he says something, it's just like super stupid. I don't know why he was like saying that, because it's like none of his business. That was like our business. He should just stay out of it. I mean, I don't even go to this school. Haley gave me a bloody nose and it hurts really bad. Oh, don't be a baby about it. Personal space. We need more of that, more strict on that. kind of scary how well that was done i guess i watched too many reality shows anyways uh <laughs> i have no idea what i'm talking about anyways uh it's friday uh let's talk about some of the uh, friday events that are happening um not much is happening in terms of this or that but here are some of the highlighted events it is closing receptions for the lbpf which is a, a, an event that's happening at um the zach the zoo town arts community center it is the last best Print Fest. So Last Best Print Fest is an event that marks the end of the silent auction bidding. During this reception, enjoy free drinks by demo by Bev uh, Glukert on hot glue g relief uh, uh, hot glue gun um, relief color graph uh, at 5.30 p.m. and care, uh, um, Claire Emery um, on Maku Hanga, which is the traditional Japanese uh, woodblock print technique um, at 6.45 p.m., also enjoy music talents of Girls Rock Camp at 3 p.m. It is B-O-Y t-shirts. Um, they will be screening Girls Rock Camp t-shirt designs on your shirt, and they'll do some light-colored tees, and make sure that you only bring light-colored tees only. So they would be doing a free printing for that, but you have to bring the shirts yourself, and that's going to be at the Zoo Town Arts Community Center. Uh, the Wizard of Oz is playing at the MCT uh tonight and pretty much all uh, this weekend and next week and I believe even a third week. Um, so if you don't know the Wizard of Oz, it's where Dorothy, Dorothy goes, uh, gets sucked up by a tornado in her Kansas farm life home and gets whisked away into a magical world where she must uh, defeat the evil wicked witch of the West to get home. Um, but the evil witch is right after her because they want the ruby slippers that she stole from her dead sister. Yep, there's a whole little like uh, play even about like from the witch's perspective, and I'm assuming that the um, MCT will probably be doing Wicked sometime soon, as soon as it becomes available for uh, um, community theater um, rights as well. It's expensive to uh, um, get the rights for uh, plays like this and more. Um, and here are some of the events that are happening in and around Missoula um, at the Missoula Public Library. Um, Tiny Tales is happening at 10.30 a.m. Uh, read some story times with some kids, along with family story time for a little bit older kids who are just about to learn to read but are still too young to understand. And that's going to be at uh, Missoula Public Library starting at 10.30 p.m., either at the big meeting hall or the Dragon Rug at the, on the um, top floor. Uh, Cloud Doe 
is going to be at the Families First Children's Museum. Um, you got open hours in the Makerspace of the Benzoa Public Library starting at 1 p.m. Um, here are some of your uh, music events that are happening tonight as well. Um, starting off with uh, some Travis Yost at Ten Spoon uh, Vineyard Winery. It's acoustic music. Jeff Lake is going to be at the Montana Brewing Company at Highlander Tap Room at 6 p.m. Uh, here are some of your late night events. Copper Mountain Band is going to be country music at the Sunrise Saloon. Uh, you got um, Nashville Unplugged Live at the Bootleggers is going to be at 9 p.m. at uh, Acoustic Comedy. It looks like there's going to be uh, some comedy as well. So it's going to be the Bootleggers Bar and Venue, which I have no idea where that's at. Don't trust me. A Foxy Friday at the Badlanders is going to be electronic music. Band in Motion is going to be at the Union Club. Loxar Cartel is going to be at the Top at Lounge starting at 10 p.m. It's R&B. Um, they're going to be with the Misfortune Tellers. Um, Rock and Roll Friday Fun Fest is going to be at the VFW at 10 p.m. Um, that concludes everything that's happening for your Friday. Here is an art club clip featuring um, an art clip binary at the Mizzou Art Museum. I haven't shown this one in a little while, but this one will be ending in on May 13th. So you guys only have so much of a chance to go check this out. Um, you have about two weeks. Hey guys, welcome back. Here's my audio. Um, so that was uh, a nice little PSA that some of the kids and I made uh, from our Saturday drop-ins. And you only have three more weekends left to check out our Saturday drop-in animation before we kick full gear into our um, summer camps, which will be starting in June. We have five camps available. We'll have a media camp. We have an animation camp. We have Raptors of the Rocky. And we have our zombie camp for the second year. So it'll be just a wonderful thing that you guys can totally check out. Um, for your Saturday, um, also, not only is our stop animation on Saturdays from 1 to 5 p.m., we also have a whole bunch of other f events that are, are happening on Saturday morning, starting with Montessori International Fundraising Sale. And it's a yard sale at Montessori Plus International Preschool starting at... Um, 8 a.m. and it goes till 4 p.m. The sale will feature great items donated from several families and fundraiser for the multicultural preschool. And you're sure to find things uh, such as toys, clothing, household goods, tools, and so much more. Come support the great part of Missoula community. Um, it's at 1535 Cooper Street off Broadway in Missoula. Um, the 45th annual 
YMCA Riverbank Run is going to happen in downtown Missoula starting at 9 a.m. Missoula's oldest uh, foot race is back for its 45th year. The 2017 Riverbank Run will be held Saturday um, starting at 9 a.m. And they, they will start uh, through this through as we, okay, one through historic downtown Missoula and the beautiful University of Montana campus. The race options are one mile, 5K, 10K, or the trifecta um, to choose from. There is something for everybody. For 50 years, the Y has kept its promise for the Missoula community and no one has ever turned away due to ability to pay. All Riverbank run proceeds benefit the Missoula's family Y's financial assistance program. Um, financial assistance for the Riverbank Run is available for qualifying individuals and families. You can call them at 721-9622 for more information. And the Riverbank Run will be starting tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Um, also tomorrow is um, F Forestry Day and Pro-Am Timber Sports Show at the historic Fort Missoula. Um, Canada to, to New Zealand, competitors from all over the world will be pre present this one-day event. Events include log rolling, hot, um, hot saws, um, pole climbing and much more. See uh, restored antique logging equipment demonstrations. Um, you got drawn um, high wheel hauler. Um, you got steam powered tractors, live antique lumber mill demonstrations, and so much more. It's a four dollar entry fee for adults, but kids get in for free. Um, Let's see. Oh, actually, wait. No, no, no. That's that's a lie. It's five dollars, four dollars for adults, three dollars for seniors, two dollars for students, ten dollars for families, and kids six and under get in for free. And of course, if you're a um, historic museum at Fort Missoula member, you also get in free. Uh, Seeds of Salad class is going to be at the Missoula County Extensions. If you don't have a space for a vegetable garden, or if your present site is too small, consider raising fresh, nutritious, homegrown vegetables in containers. Growing vegetables in containers is an easier way to experience the flavor flavor and freshness of homegrown veggies. Container gardens improve portable. They suit many lifestyles. They allow creative expression in small spaces. Plant your own salad container to take home. Make your own salad dressing. And this is happening 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Missoula County Extensions Office at 2825 Santa Fe, um, yep, Santa Fe Court. And you can call to reserve at 258-4206 and it's a $15 fee because you get to bring home a pot and everything. Um, there's the Down the Hatch Festival at Karis Park, um, starting at 12. Um, help them kick off the downtown festival season with the um, with their only very own Down the Hatch Fest, and it's going to be downtown at Karis Park. Um, it encompasses everything in Missoula during the warm months. Fly fishing, good music, um, beer, I believe. Big Sky Brewing Company's uh, providing the beer there. You have Good Eats competition. Um, watch fly fishing guides all over the western United States compete for the um, the guide Olympics. Um, so activities for kids. And they have International Fishing Festival, uh, film festival as well, and tickets will be sold as well. Um, they'll also be uh, um, kind of finishing up their event at the Wilma Theater as well. It'll be the Down the Hatch Festival starting at Karis Park, and then after that's pretty much over. You guys can go down to the Wilma, and they have other things happening there as well. Um, but the biggest thing that's happening on your Saturday is the Fort Missoula grand opening of the regional park. Um, since 2014, uh, since the 2014 Fort Missoula Regional Park ba um, um, bond passed, they've been working diligently on making this park uh, open and available to the public. They opened the trails around the park, but now they're going to open the park for everybody. And this is going to be the phase one section. Phase two will be completed in 2018, the summer, maybe towards the middle and, or the end of the summer, depending upon how fast they go. But phase one is complete, and the whole uh, bulk of uh, trails, um, you have the... Uh, um, the fields, you have the mini, mini fields, soccer fields, there's a rugby field, there's a, um, I mean, I showed you a video on Wednesday, you guys can watch that on MCAT.org, which kind of gives you a nice little tour of the place. The, um, the big gates of the opening are open, and it's going to rival even um, um, mini, it's going to be one of the best parks in the state of Montana. It's, it's definitely going to be one of the bigger ones for sure. Um, so you can check that out. Uh, you have live music, dancing, sports on the synthetic turf and games. That's what I was looking for, synthetic turf. They have a synthetic turf field, which can be pretty much used year-round, and they use recycled um, rubber. They don't use recycled rubber, that's to say. They, they, said they called it a virgin rubber, so you don't have to worry about having recycled or having chemicals in the rubber when you guys are on the turf field. And they'll be doing this pretty much all sorts of days. And also, if you guys... 
I mean, there's just going to be a whole bunch of things. There's going to be guided tours. They have people uh, from uh, representing the Historic Museum at Fort Missoula giving guided tours of the area and talking about the history of Fort Missoula. If you want to know more information, you go to the Historic Museum at Fort Missoula.org. Um, they also have another little thing happening at the Little Red Wagon Parade starting at 2 p.m. Um, you guys can check that out. Uh, the Dances of Universal Peace for Celebration Islam Week at Ar Har Shalom. Um, so uh, they had a proclamation just uh, two Mondays ago. Um, and uh, Har Shalom will be hosting a dance for uh, Celebrate Islam Week starting at 6 p.m. in Har Shalom. It's right across from the YMCA off of um, Broadway. No, Russell. <laughs> I'm terrible with names today, but it's a five to twenty dollars suggested donation. But they will not turn you away if you can't pay. Um, Missoula Symphony Orchestra concert Four Seasons. Darko Buderatz uh, was here last Friday to talk about uh, this event that's happening uh, tomorrow and tonight at the University of Montana. I believe I believe it's two nights in a row, but don't don't quote me on that. But for sure tomorrow um, is happening. Missoula Symphony Orchestra concert Four Seasons. Um, also, uh, they'll be performing The Rite of Spring, which was controversial at the time when it was um, in its inception. So you guys can check that out along with many other events by logging on to MissoulaEvents.net. There's a whole bunch of things happening all over the place. You have Free Cycle Support the Scene Show at 7 p.m. You got Missoula Symphony Orchestra, um, absolutely, with um, Chris Moon at the Badlander. Joan Zen is happening. It's playing at the Union Club. Uh, Hill Stomp is at the Top Hat Lounge. Taj and Radical Linguistics is happening at the VFW. I'm surprised I could actually say that. So without further ado, here is the last teen talk um, of the season. Um, maybe we'll bring it back next year, but honestly, I don't even like teen talk anymore. So here's teen talk, hopefully for the last time. <laughs> Welcome back to Teen Talks. I'm Neil Wells, and this is the last episode. Uh, of the season, though, right? I don't know, probably. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if it's going to be... That's going to be up to you guys. You have to convince Scott we're to do more. We're just oh, going yeah. to screw everyone else over and be like, I don't even get to so Teen Talks. today yeah, here I'm joined be. by our returning, our returning members, Owen and Jackson, but nobody else. Nobody else. It's just us. So, how do you guys feel about the end of Teen Talks? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, get Owen's opinion. Owen, how has Teen Talks changed your life? As a great man once said, I don't know what great man, but as a great man once said, something great doesn't last forever. I would drop it some truly. Knowledge. You think yeah, you're so yeah. cool. You think you're so smart. This is truly beautiful. Well, uh, I don't know. I mean, I kind of, I don't know, because we might revive it next next year. But uh, it would be fun to, you know, like screw over all the people that didn't show up, Na dropping names: Ellen, Liam, Jack. I just, when you watch this this DVD, just know that I'm coming for you. <laughs> Yeah, it's empty. Mm -hmm. it feels so empty. It's kind of nice. <laughs> yeah, actually. It actually um, is really nice. We can we can transition cool. between talking pretty easily like yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's not. Shut up, Owen. Oh, sorry. All our, videos, <laughs> all our videos should be like this. All our videos and, there, should be like this. and there's not um, Liam that like takes a long time to that, get that's through the Jack. point. Jack takes a long time. Yeah. Yeah, I see you, Jack. You just got mad at me. <laughs> I'm manipulating you. No, yes. I think. So. You magnificent bastard. Jackson, how has Teen Talks changed your life? Where were you before Teen Talks? Uh. H have you seen a whole new world of possibilities? Would you recommend Teen Talks to a friend? I would rec. I probably wouldn't recommend Teen Talks to a friend <laughs> since we're gonna be the only 
since because uh, I don't know because I don't assume that a <clears throat> ton of people actually want to watch this <laughs> just to face the truth huh. um, besides I, I don't have very many friends also it's okay all my friends are on teen talks <laughs> namely everyone <laughs> no I'm just kidding Na- yeah, yeah so uh, and send me a friend request on Facebook not even on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, that's the point. But don't they don't know that, Owen? Uh, follow us on Twitter at, at um, Teen Talks at Twitter at Teen Talks. That's that's not Dot real. Com. Follow us anyway. Um, Still follow, follow. You know that guy uh, that's pretending to be us. Yeah, so, follow him. So I think we we've spent enough time lamenting at the end of Teen Talks. Yeah. And me having to resign, the host mm-hmm. chair. Um. But so now we're going to talk about our summer plans. Holy crap, who's going to be the host? Who is? That's we'll audition question. for we'll, it. We'll figure it maybe out later. We'll, maybe um, we'll see who's uh, what freshman come in next year. So if Owen. If we even do it. What are your summer plans? All Killing like myself. Whoa. No, no, whoa. no, those don't, are all, don't, whoa, those are, whoa, those are no. all plans. No, they weren't. Don't Owen. put words in my mouth. Owen. I think you're I'm listening trying. to Simon too much. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I heard you were gonna make, uh, I heard you two were gonna make a project, a video project yeah. this summer. Mm-hmm. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, well, uh, yeah, Owen, you can um, do that. basically, uh, it's about a rabbit that lives in an awful family situation, and we're still trying to decide exactly what genre it is. Mm-hmm. Like, well, I mean, it's, it's like animation comedy. Well, yeah, but we need, like, a premise in it, but... Is it going to have, like, a more serious theme, though? Like, what it's like to grow up with an abusive family? Kind of, and not really. Not really? At the same time. You can interpret it that way, but you'd be wrong. (laughs) No, no, it definitely definitely touches points on having an abusive dad. Like, Mm. all that's real. (laughs) But it's all just, like, um, funny stuff also. Yeah, yeah. Going for kind of a Rick and Morty vibe? Kind of, but I didn't want to copy it exactly. That's that's good. Yeah. Morty. Yeah, so, do you have any other plans over the summer? Sleep. Um, more vacations, sleep. more work. Sleep. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna work, I'm lazy. I'm probably gonna try to get a job. I don't know where yet, but. Gonna put some money away? Yeah. That's good. Mm-hmm. It's always good to start saving, especially in high school. Mm-hmm. That way you can afford to do things. You guys think you're going to take any school trips? Over the summer? Not over the summer, but like, if you are, over the summer would be a a great time to start saving. I don't know. See, I think uh, next year is uh, another Japan trip. Oh. You guys should do that. I did that. It was awesome. I'll just go to Japan by myself. I'll embrace my culture with my family. Get lost in Tokyo? Yeah, you know. Go do that. Take the plane. On June 9th, don't even show up to that last day of school. Just take that plane. Okay. Take that plane, Jackson. He's mostly American. Yeah, but you guys still... <laughs> yeah. Take that plane. I'm not mostly American. I mean, there's no such thing technically as American, because they're all, like, British immigrants anyway. The only real American is the Native Americans. Truth bomb struck. I'm from the red. I'm totally joking. <laughs> I am, but yeah, I have nothing to do with that. Well, now Scott's telling us that we gotta wrap it oh, up. Oh, yes, so. yes, yes, yes. yes. So, so, Thanks for joining us here. The last time on a very Pro- special installment of Teen Talks. It might get revived. Yeah, but you know, That's up we, to don't, them. we kinda wanna we just kinda wanna mess up everyone, so hey, no no no, I'm doing it this time. This is my thing. Goodbye. This is my thing. Goodbye. Goodbye.